Hi, welcome to the Prairie Oaks Pulpit Bible Study. And we've been going through Hebrews 11, uh, both preparing for Vacation Bible School, which starts tomorrow night for me, and also just learning about Noah, Abraham, and Moses, how by faith they traded, they chose the things of God rather than settling for things of this world. And we come to the climax, and it's Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to do more of a Bible study uh, than an elaborate outline or anything. I'm just going to walk our way through these uh, three verses here in Hebrews chapter 12. So let's start by reading it. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And then we're just going to walk our way through it here, and let's see what's going on. And we see that the first word is, therefore. And that always reminds us we want to see what came before, because this is obviously connecting to what he just said. And so... In that, we look at the previous two verses, and it says that these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God providing something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Well, who are all these? Well, it's the faithful witnesses who, by faith, like Abel, like Enoch, like Abraham, like Sarah, like Moses' parents, like Moses himself. Uh, and, and going on, he says, time fails me. They received a testimony from God of their faith and that he was pleased with their faith. And by doing so, they were witnesses of God and his faithfulness to his promises. Even though they didn't receive the big promise, which was the coming of the Messiah and the better thing he has planned in the future. And so that's what's kind of going on in those two verses. So he says, built on that idea, therefore we also, we get to participate in this. This isn't just something for them. It's something for us to obtain a good testimony by faith from God that he's pleased with our believing and trusting him and that trusting changing our lives that we look different uh, than the rest of the world because we're living for his promises not for the pleasures not for the possessions not for uh, the things of this world not for the passions instead we're living on the promises and so we also can do that. And when we do so, it gives a testimony to others of the value of God's promises, just like Moses, as we saw last week. And speaking of, that's what I think he's getting at when he says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It's not that they're witnessing what we're doing. It's that they are giving testimony of God, that his promises are worthwhile. So their testimony is to us to encourage us, to remind us it's going to be worth it. Because go back to the full context, this whole letter was written by the pastor to the Hebrews to encourage them not to give in and go back to what's comfortable, what's safe, but to trust Christ and his promises, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be better. It's going to be better with Christ for eternity. 
just as Noah found, just as Abraham found, just as Moses found. So seeing we're surrounded by them, and many of those who gave that testimony died for their faith. And this is an important point to kind of point out that word witness in the Greek is where we get the word for martyr. And if you didn't spend the time reading all of chapter 11 of Hebrews, you missed out on among those faithful witnesses were those who died for their faith. They literally died physically because they trusted in God's promises. And we know that still happens today in different parts of the world. They die for their trust in Jesus Christ. And so he says, seeing we're surrounded by so great a cloud of martyrs, witnesses. Let us then get serious about the walk of faith. Let us lay aside every weight. What are weights? Well, that goes back to the things that like Moses traded in and Abraham traded in. The security of, of this world, which isn't really real. The, the possessions, the pleasures, the, the people. All these things are fickle and can be, can be lost quite easily, but instead living by the promises. So lay aside those weights. They're not necessarily bad things. Now, it does say in the sin which so easily ensnares us, so we know that those would be bad things. Sin is. But some of those things are just weights. They're holding us back. Not that they're a bad thing, but they're keeping us from the best thing. We don't want to settle for good when we could have best. And so just like those witnesses before, we lay aside the winds, the, the weights, we lay aside the sins that can trip us up, and we want to run with endurance. It's not a sprint. You can't see the finish line from here. It's run with endurance. It's a long race. It's a lifetime race. And how do you keep going? Well, one is you listen to what they tell you, that it's worth it. But it'd be nice if someone had gone before, faced the worst it could be, and finished with honors. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author. That's not really talking about someone who writes something. It's talking about the chief leader who blazes the trail. And so the one who has gone before laid out the path and he has finished. He's completed. He's finished with all of the goals accomplished of faith, the life of faith, the, the race of faith. And you might say, well, it wasn't much of a faith thing for him, was it, to live the life that he lived? Because after all, he was God, right? But humanly, he still chose to trust that his father was going to work it out to his glory, even though there was going to be pain in the offering. Because that's what he says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The cross. He came and he served. He didn't just serve, but he died. He didn't just die. He died on a cross. He despised the shame, the embarrassment, the humiliation, whatever word you want to put in there. He said it's not, it's not that big a deal. Why? Oh, it's a horribly bad deal. But it's not a big deal compared to where he is now. Because he has finished the course and he sits as the victor at the finish line. Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so he receives all of the awards because he's finished. And he says, look to Jesus to keep going on, to not give up, to, to press on. 
Because he says, I want you to consider him. One who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. He was the perfect human being and they still hated him for it. They still mocked and scourged and spit and eventually murdered him. He says, look to see how he went. He not only finished the course and got all of the honors, he did it under the worst of conditions. And he says, I want you to look to him, consider him, think about him, count the cost, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Because that's one of the weights that we have to deal with as well. Discouragement. We just want to give up. Is it really going to be worth it? And he says, look unto Jesus. Consider him. We get tired. I feel tired a lot of the time. Let us not grow weary. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged in your souls. Keep pressing on. Doing what we can. Doing the best that we can. Asking God for his strength and his help. Because he's faithful. He will do just that. He will help us. And so, that's our encouragement here. That's what we observe going on in these verses. And so you can see what the application is. Is then be encouraged. I will continue to look to Jesus. I will continue to see that he's made it to his right hand. And he's given me promises that I will be with him. That where he is there I may be also. And that there are rewards. And the rewards are worth it. I'll look to see how others have done the same thing. We'll look at the Old Testament heroes. We'll look at the New Testament heroes. We may look at some of the heroes of our own of our own life. Good godly men and women who they inspired us. I was just visiting with a friend of mine about a lady we know. Just she's in her 90s and still just a faithful gracious woman. A godly example for us. We want to finish like she does. Um, there's going to be a funeral this coming week of another good lady, 89 years old, just a good testimony from others of her testimony of Christ lived out that others would say, she's what a Christian should be. Yeah. And God testifies that they have their reward. There's a reward for that. And so that's going to be my application. That's what I'm applying there. And so then I just ask God in prayer, God, help me to be that kind of person. And that I share that with others to be a good witness of who God is and his faithfulness. And that trusting him, living by that faith is worth it even when it hurts, even when it looks like it's being a loser, even when I want to give up, I won't give up. Just keep pressing on. And so I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, these are some verses for us to really think on, and I gave the challenge to our kids at church and to our adults. Let's memorize these verses, put them in our heart, and to be able to use them to feed our souls, to, to keep us going when we don't want to keep going. And I hope you do the same. So God bless, God keep you, and I look forward to seeing you next week.